coming up. And I realize pretty immediately this is not my husband. And I look and there's just a young man standing next to my bed who then just disappears into nothing. Welcome to Unholy Vibes. I am your host, Alex. Today we have another special guest, our good friend, Aaron. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell us who you are, what you do, and we'll go from there. Uh, yeah, I am Aaron Sauls Morneau. I am one half of The Booty Call by Roll for Booty. The other half is my lovely best friend, Billy. So you can uh, catch us there. And then I also run a theater company in Sacramento called Resurrection Theater with my mother and a couple of our friends. And we are currently in the middle of gearing up for a production of William Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream that I am costuming. So that's me, basically, in a nutshell. Professional costume designer. Yeah. Kind of, sort of, right? Yeah. Kind of, yeah. sort of. I, I do also like freelance contract work for the equity theaters in Sacramento. So predominantly Sacramento Theater Company, who is currently in the middle of a merger. So we may lose them, which is unfortunate. But, you know. Theater. <laughs> theater. Yeah. We're she's here a live beast. So, yeah. Aaron and I met last year. When we were doing a live session with the booty call, yeah, or roll for booty presents the booty call, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was me and my old co host of the Weeb and the Cash, Rex. And yeah, we met then, did a little first half of a one shot DD campaign that's still yet to be finished. Yeah. But Billy had told me because Billy was a guest on the show as well a few yeah. episodes back, and he told me that you had some spooky stories as well. And I was like, okay, I want them, so <laughs> let's add it to the decks. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. for me, it's like Pokemon, but it's scary stories. I gotta catch them all. Like I want, <laughs> I want to hear everyone's stories. I want to have them on here. So go ahead and give us some background of your stories and tell us. Where, when, how, why, what, and we'll go, you know, yeah. tell us the stories and we'll go from there. So I, I've got a couple, I guess a little background, me and ghosts wise, is that I, as long as I can remember and before I can remember, have had interactions with the dead kind of constantly. I, I don't know why. My mother often told me when I was little that I would just constantly be talking to people that like I should not have known because they were dead friends of hers that had passed, family members, things like that. I don't remember a lot of these because I was, I was really small. But as I grew up, I constantly was aware of like people other people couldn't see, which is a weird thing. My mom does like to joke that it's because I killed Jim Henson, which I'm so sorry, Henson Company, about this joke that we make. But I died the exact day Jim Henson was born, like almost to the minute. The yeah. way around. <laughs> yeah. So wait, wait, you said you like, died the day no, he was yeah, born. Yeah, I, I was born. I was born the day he died, exactly, okay, like almost okay. the minute. My mother literally was like in labor with me, had been for like 30 some odd hours. I'm sorry, mom. And then, you know, TV on in the delivery room. Jim Henson has died and then out I come. I'm so sorry to the Henson family. <laughs> but maybe that's what it is, is, you know. But what have you? I do love puppets. It's fine. But yeah, I've always been very aware of the thinness of the veil around me, if you will. I think my earliest encounter that I can remember was I was at my grandmother's house, so my mom's mom's house, and I was sitting in my grandmother's kitchen helping her fold apple turnovers. And I was like, what's that lady doing? over by the stove when did she come in here my grandmother's like what are you talking about there's nobody over there and I was like that really short woman with the curly gray hair and she's like what and I was like I can't understand her she's not speaking English and my grandmother's like what are you talking about and I was like she's stirring your apple compote like do you not see this tiny woman I, I think I was like five maybe six and she's like what are you talking about what does it sound like she's saying and I repeated some of it and it was Hungarian, unbeknownst to me. My grandmother's mother was Hungarian and basically never learned to speak English because why would she? And had died. She'd kind of lost her mind as she got older. My grand, my great grandfather was killed by a train when he was like in his 40s. He was a railway worker and he was crushed 
by a train he was working on the yeah he was a brakeman so he was fixing the railroad ties on this stocked train up in lincoln and the brake snapped and killed him and she kind of went insane after that which i mean fair i would and i guess like towards the end of her life was just really out of it and my grandmother took care of her in that house and was just like are you seeing my mother like this woman that i never met she died when my mom was like 17 like buck wild but she was nitpickedly stirring my grandmother's apple compote (laughs) which i guess was fitting she like you said you heard some words and were relaying the words do you remember any of them what she was saying i don't because i don't speak hungarian and my nana never told me Mm -hmm. because she mostly just thought i was having a stroke so you know (laughs) then she said something to my mom my mom came to pick me up and my mom was like yeah she talks to Rhonda all the time at home and she's like what which is my mom's late best friend and they sort of were just like well that's crazy and then my nana got her revenge after she died my grandmother after she passed away because my mom and i took care of her at the end of her life woke us up at the minute she died for like three months straight it drove my mother insane we really? would hear her. Yes. We'd be dead asleep. And we'd just hear, we'd hear Margie, Ari, Margie, Ari, like at the top of the stairs. Like she was standing at the top of our stairs. And both of us would come down the hallway and be like, Nana, Nana. Yeah, it's Nana. Thanks, Nana. Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> For three months. It was like, it, and we're sure that it was just, she was making sure we were fine without her. She was that kind of person where like, she had to make sure everybody was taken care of. And so like, that's clearly what she was doing. She couldn't let go until she knew we were going to be fine without her. Yeah. But like, yeah, until and finally we were like, man, you got to stop. Like, we need to sleep. We love you. We miss you. We're OK. Like, do you, think, you know, do you think maybe she didn't realize she was dead or didn't accept that she was dead? No, I think she knew. I think she just like wasn't ready to go wherever she needed to go until she was like, my kids are OK. I think she needed us to tell her we were OK. Right. Yeah, because once we did, she stopped doing it. I'll still get little hints of her and my grandfather every so often, mostly in things they loved. My Nana sends me hummingbirds. I smell cigarette smoke all the time. My grandfather was a smoker. He always smoked like cigarette smoke. Sometimes I'll just smell it, especially on days when I'm really stressed out. I'll just smell cigarette smoke because I know he's like, you're all right. Chill. You're fine. So it's those weird little things. They send you little messages no matter where they are. But yeah, so it, those are sort of the things that I experienced growing up just like familially. And then I moved into this house. <laughs> I love my house. It's adorable. It's, it was built in 1963. Too old. Um, too, too, once, you get, <laughs> once you get pre-1970, there's just a higher chance of it being haunted. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Not to mention my neighborhood was the neighborhood that was stalked by the Golden State Killer. Oh, cool. Um, Super cool. Yeah, yeah, very cool. I do deeply refuse to look into who this woman might be, but there is a woman who lives in our house. She so there's two back bedrooms that are like at the end of this hallway behind me. One of them is our bedroom, which we know used to not be like the main bedroom because there was remodeling done before we moved in where they split. There used to be one bathroom and they split it in half. So now there's like a tiny guest bathroom off the hallway closet. And then they put the other bathroom in our bedroom. But our bedroom is decidedly smaller than the other bedroom. So that other bedroom was like clearly the main bedroom of the house before these renovations were made. And about 530 every morning, I will hear this woman get up in that room, walk into our room to do something walk out of our room into the bathroom through the hallway because that's the original door to the original bathroom put her around in between the two bathrooms as if it's one bathroom for about 30 minutes or so then walk down the hallway into the kitchen put her around in the kitchen for like a solid hour come back down the hall into her bedroom and then walk out the front door she does it at 5 30 every weekday morning she's just getting ready to go to work every weekday morning we don't know why it's very strange she clearly has no idea she's dead she doesn't seem to mind that we live here which is nice but she just it's like it's very odd she just goes about her day nothing's different i hate to break it to you i think someone's just breaking into your house every morning (laughs) maybe (laughs) i mean maybe have you ever gotten out of bed and and be like oh hey someone's like when did 
let's rewind. When did this yeah. start? And what was the first yeah. time you were like, is someone breaking in? Like, it sounds like someone's in our house. Yeah. So the first time it happened was after we lived here, I want to say for like a week or so. And I'm a super light sleeper. My husband sleeps like he's dead. Everything wakes me up. Everything right. wakes me up. So I hear movement in the other bedroom, which is my office. And so I hear movement. Like I hear a closet door slide open and closed, but we, the doors aren't on that closet. We took them off because I'm going to like sink a bookcase in there. So there's not doors on the closet and there's like stuff piled up in front of it. So you couldn't open them. So I hear closet doors open and close. And at first I'm like, oh, is my husband getting up to go to work? No, I look over. He's asleep. I'm like, okay i look at my phone it's like 5 30 then i hear footsteps come into our room the door doesn't open and i'm like what is happening and at first i'm like is somebody in our attic did somebody get in because there's two attic entries one at the end of the hallway and one in our garage our garage doesn't have a door into our house so to get into our house from that other attic you'd have to go out this attic door right so I'm like, is somebody in our attic? Like, what's happening? I'm like, all right, I'm just, maybe it's just old house. It's creaking. Maybe it's fine, right? Then I hear the other bathroom door open because it's a sliding pocket door. So it makes like a sliding door noise. And I'm like, there's somebody in my house. Mm -hmm. I wake up Robert. I'm like, I think there's somebody in the house. And he's like, what? Huh? Like springs to life, grabs the sword he has next to our bed. <laughs> <laughs> because my husband is a nerd and has many a sword next to our bed literally grabs like one of his fencing ray beers opens our bedroom door the dogs have woken up their bar gang one of them goes to run to the back door because he's like yay i get to go potty like runs down the hallway robert runs out stark naked holding a fencing sword looks around goes to the back door opens the back door lets the dog out i'm still hearing somebody and i'm like what is happening comes back he's like there's nobody in the house nobody's here and that's like right around the time i hear the sink turn on and i'm like i just heard the faucet do you not hear that and oh, he's like boy. i don't know what you're talking about and i'm like hold us so i barrel down the hallway into the kitchen faucet's not on no lights are on in our kitchen nobody's in there and i'm like what is happening and so first i was like all right maybe i'm just like new house paranoid not used to sleeping here fine so then, like a week maybe later, we're playing at our table here. We're playing Ravenloft, our Ravenloft campaign, which Billy is in. Billy, who sits next to me at the table, looks down the hallway and grabs my arm, like grabs it hard. And is like, there is a woman at the end of your hallway. And I turn and I look and I see her too. And we're both just staring at this woman at the end of our hallway. And I look and I'm like, okay, do you see a late middle age? And he's like, yeah, blonde woman wearing glasses in like a pantsuit. I was like, yes. So we're both just staring at this woman. Everyone else at the table is like role playing, ignoring us, whatever. Finally, they realize we're both just like down the hallway, like staring, dead staring down the hallway. And we just see her glare at us and just walk into that other bedroom. And we're like, the fuck and then everybody's like what's happening and i'm like hold on and i get up and i walk down the hallway and i look at the back bedroom nobody's there there's no way nobody's out there there's no way out there's a window in there but it has a screen on it and it's like so our house was clearly built for people who were like really tall so all of our counters and our windows and everything are like five feet from the ground like the, all the bases of our windows are like at my shoulder height almost. Wow. And I'm like five foot five. So she would have had to have climbed through my junk, opened the window, popped the screen off, and then leapt like five feet out of a window, which clearly this woman was like not going to do. She and then was put like the a, screen back on, right? Yeah. Yeah. I closed the window and lock it. <laughs> and so I come back on ball. She's not down there. And Billy's like, what <laughs> happened? And I was like, I don't know. Every time Billy is wow. here, this woman messes with him. It's so funny. She'll like wave at him from the end of the hallway or she'll like like knock on stuff near him. Like she loves to mess with Billy and it's so funny. We don't know why either. Question. Yeah. Um, yeah. Answer. When I yeah. come visit California, can I come take a tour of your yeah. house? A thousand percent you can. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I don't know if you listened to Billy's episode or watched his episode with. No, with I didn't. Here. I didn't. Yeah. 
you should give it a little look, little listen. I'm sure you've heard the stories before because you've known Billy for years and you're his friend and everything. So yeah, he was telling me about his experiences. And so I'm like, oh, Billy is more sensitive to those things. Totally. Oh, totally. He is. And I sound like a broken record because I mention this almost every episode, but I am not sensitive to those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I believe I don't see. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I don't, I'm just not on that wavelength, on that vibration, whatever you want to call, call it, call it, whatever. I think I, I would love to go and take a little tour of the place. And I, I I just feel strongly that nothing would happen for me. Yeah. Yeah. And that's fine with me. That's fine with me. Yeah. But dang, sometimes I wish here's the, here's the thing. Here's the flip side though. Maybe I don't wish something would happen. Cause then I'm like, dang, now I'm, now it's actually happening. (laughs) Sometimes it's jarring. So I don't know if my house has a second ghost, but I have started to see someone else in my house. I was, dead asleep the other day my husband gets up fairly early when he has to go into the office which is where he is today and i was i usually he like comes and he wakes me up and he says goodbye and he like stands on his side of the bed and leans over he's like all right baby i'm leaving and i'm like okay and i remember him doing that and leaving but i was super tired so i was like maybe i forgot about it but i was like oh someone's standing where robert stands and so i like woke up and I was like, oh, baby, you haven't left for work. And I realized it's like pretty immediately, this is not my husband. And I look and there's just a young man standing next to my bed who then just disappears into nothing. Like he like, he like, I don't feel good, Mr. Stark. And like faded out of existence. And I was like, who the fuck was that? That's not middle-aged lady that lives in my house. Who the fuck was that guy? Dang. <laughs> so let me ask you this, because yeah. I've always been curious about this because different people... Mm-hmm have yeah. told me about times they've seen spirits or ghosts or whatever and they disappear in front of their eyes we're like pantsuit yeah. lady she walked away and then was she gone away. yeah when you see this ghost or person disappear is it like mm-hmm. the opacity just gets turned down or is it like yeah. a fog yes. or a mist or is it a no it's instant like it's... blip no it's like he like turned his opacity off like he was like i'm going bye bye now yeah i'm just like <laughs> And, and like, I'm transparent. <laughs> yeah, it was buck wild. And I was like, huh? I've never seen him before. Who is that? Wow. And why did he wait until we've lived here for two years to show up in my bedroom? Do you think maybe and it's like, not a ghost, but someone astral projecting? Maybe it could be. I've never seen him before. I do sometimes, like, if I am out somewhere, or especially, God, especially when I'm driving, dead people will just be like, what's up? And, like, pop up in the road and stuff. And I'm like, come on, man. Like, I look insane because I swerved to hit nothing. (laughs) Like, why? So it could just be someone who needed my help. Because sometimes when dead people know you can see them, they're like, help me, I'm confused. And I'm like, you're dead. Oh, that's not my job like i don't that's not me sorry go find a tv medium or something like that's not <laughs> my vibe sorry so i maybe and i haven't seen him since but he was just so he was just just standing there watching me sleep and i woke up and he was like oh that is terrifying <laughs> and i'm scared the shit out of me well yeah Do you have any, and I have to ask this just because I do, do you have any history of like sleep paralysis? No, I don't at all. Because you're you're not awake and stuck, like you're not frozen. You can move immediately. I can move immediately, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've never had sleep paralysis. I just have to ask because people are like, well, I did this, this, and this. And it's like, well, let's talk about your history real quick. You know, talk about this, that, and the other. I don't want to just step forward with a foot of doubt oh, towards totally. every person's story it's just i have to approach it because i want to hear everything and believe it all and yeah like be- yeah believe that everyone's telling the truth and they believe that they're telling the truth at least but certain things like sleep paralysis you see all sorts of crazy stuff yeah. when you're on sleep paralysis who's to say that it's yeah. not because your body's vibing at a different level and you're actually seeing something in yeah. an unconscious state that's real or maybe it's you're just your brain making it up 
who's to say? Not me. Yeah. I'm no scientist. Yeah. So I just right. have to ask, you know, <laughs> sleep paralysis, drugs, alcohol, things like that. But uh, nope. I'm not trying to like dig into anyone's personal lives. So I apologize if yeah. that's how it's coming off of. It's just, oh no, ghost, totally ghost, fine. ghost and spirits are such an unknown. Yeah. They're unknown. And yeah. There's no science to it. <laughs> well, yeah. S- there, there is to some people, you know, yeah, like, right, 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 right. but, yeah. but we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. Anywho, so sorry to interrupt and ask all these questions. Um, oh, no. So you've got Pantsuit Lady, which is that's just what I'm going to refer Pantsuit to her Lady. as. Yeah. Have you tried communicating with any of the, her specifically or any other of the ghosties that you run into? I haven't yet. Mostly because like she seems pretty content and she seems pretty chill with us. So I'm kind of like, unless she starts to get uppity, I'm probably just going to let her vibe unless she starts she's chill, acting she's... out you know yeah and sometimes she'll leave our cabinet like kitchen cabinets open and i'll blame my husband and he'll be like i wasn't in the kitchen today and i'll be like that bitch. why was that kitchen cabinet open <laughs> and he'll be like i don't know and i'll be like guess it was house ghost and he'll go guess it was house ghost and then we'll just like walk away you know stuff like that but she's she seems pretty content but the other one i don't know <laughs> if he comes back i might be like who the fuck are you why are you watching me sleep like, sir, have you ever can, tried to please. catch anything on camera? Oh my god, I was trying to find this video and I cannot find it. And I'm so mad. So, theater ghost, who I will talk about momentarily, scary theater ghost. I have video of him turning the fans on, but I can't find it anywhere. And I'm so mad. And I can't remember exactly what year we did the show that he was doing that in. And I'm livid because I have full video of our fans just going, Where? And then stopping, like dead stopping. And you can see the plug dangling next to it, just unplugged. And I'm like, why can't I find this video? Of course I can't find this video. Theater demon. If you do find uh, it. If you I do s- find it, I will send it you to you. Send it my way. Yeah. Uh, I, I will post that on our, our Instagram so people yeah. can see that. Okay, so- and also, I do have like a spooky, I need to find it, but I do have... If I can find it, my backyard camera caught like a full blown orb and I'll have to see if I can find the video and I'll also send you that because it's wild. The thing slowly flies into frame, hovers in front of our camera for a minute and then just blips and is gone. Can't see it. Leave. It doesn't fly off. I watched this video like five times. I was like, am I seeing what I'm seeing? And I showed my husband and he's like, that's weird. And he's like, it might have been a bug. And I was like, I don't think that was a bug. Because like our backyard camera catches pretty like vivid, detailed video of like a bunch of the bugs in our backyard, Mm -hmm. especially the spider who has made a home on top of it, which is hilarious. But it this thing, was it was like this big. And my camera was like, there's somebody in your backyard because it does it anytime it sees movement. And I'm like, oh, what's this bug? Blah, blah, blah. And it like goes. Bye, like gone. And I was like, Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. So I'll, I'll try and find that one too and send it to you if Heck I can yeah. find both. I'll dig around in my phone. I just haven't had time because I'm building costumes. Right. And I'm like, I because my phone's a Google phone, so I can like search in my like videos. And I was like, ceiling fan. Elect- and it's like not finding anything and i'm like excuse you yeah i, I have to do that <laughs> sometimes and i'm like I, you just yeah. have to search video and then scroll through years of videos and you're like great yeah and it's and this happened solidly like years ago at this point the fan thing but the backyard camera thing was fairly recent so i'm pretty sure i can find it i'm hoping i'm like looking at my phone right now i'm like can i find it yeah, it was is so strange. So theater ghost. Yes. So that's that's all the <laughs> we home occurrences, a little bit. Right? The, the, yeah. Yeah, that's all the home occurrences. Okay. She's pretty chill. She She's chilling. she does what she wants. She chill. Our theater space is so haunted. There are three ghosts in the theater complex we work out of. Two of them are in our big space, and they're the pretty benign ghosts. One of them we just call costume ghost. We don't know who she is. We think she died when it was an old auto parts warehouse. She hangs out up in the costume storage. That's why we call her costume ghost. She's not mean, but she's also kind of a dick. 
in that she'll like, especially if you're working in our light booth, she loves to mess with whoever's in the light booth. She'll come up and you'll be sitting there and you'll feel like fingers run through your hair or you'll just, you'll hear like, you'll hear something in your ear or like you'll hear, hey, <laughs> or she'll blow on your neck, like things like that she's just she likes to mess with people but she's never been malevolent the other one we know who he is his name is dennis wilkerson he owned the theater complex his apartment used to be upstairs in the large space lovely man passed away in about 2002 2004 his vintage toy collection is still up there he owned the space he was who made it into a theater space He's mostly just there making sure stuff's running, making sure stuff's working. We'll hear his keys jingle. We've seen him watch rehearsals before. He likes to watch like final dress rehearsals. So you'll look over and he'll just be sitting like three seats down from you watching your final dress, taking notes. Like He's just going about his day. Dennis is lovely. We say hi to him every time we go in there. We say goodbye to him every night. We love Dennis. He is our lovable theater ghost. We save a chair for him, things like that which is a theater tradition. If you have a theater ghost, you save a chair for them. So that's typically a thing that we do for Dennis, only Dennis, because we love Dennis. The Ooh, other, okay, <laughs> yeah, the other theater, which is named for Dennis Wilkerson, the Wilkerson Theater, is the 42-seat medium-sized theater. It's a little black box, which for theater people, they know what that is, but in theater terms, it means it's a very small kind of box-shaped stage where the seats are on level with the audience, like the stage, like the playing area. So there's no push or proscenium, anything like that. You're like people are level with the stage. And we don't know what or who is in there, but they are probably the scariest entity I have ever experienced. Oh boy. When you walk in there, you just feel this like overwhelming sense of dread. From the second you, and there's two doors into the theaters, one that heads straight to backstage and one into the lobby. And you'll open it and you just feel like this wall, like you have to walk through this wall of like rage almost to get in there. And they've, so they've tried to get rid of him a couple of times and nothing has worked. From what we can tell, he can't get out of the Wilkerson but it used to be he was just back in the dressing room and he's managed to make his way like almost all the way to the lobby at this point. Like he's gotten stronger as because we've been in this theater space for like 15 years and he's just so angry. I don't like and we, that. And you can feel it like literally actors do not like working in that space. We've literally had actors be like, I don't want to be do a sh do shows with you guys because working in that space is, is awful. It's awful. You can feel it. It's so it's just like there's something crushing you when you're in there. And when the lights are off, it's like no light can get in there at all. Something about it is just like it sucks the light out of the air around the space. It's crazy how cave like dark it can get in there when you turn the lights out. It's nuts. And you can feel him the second you turn the lights out, like coming at you. We'll literally do a thing where we're like, all right, everybody out. And then someone will be like, lights going out. Everybody just runs out of the building. Runs. I've heard him. I've heard his shoes like coming Ooh. after me. No, thank you. Yes. It's awful. Awful. Has... And there was one. It's... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to ask like, yeah, other than just the bad vibes, has anything actually mm -hmm. like, happened? Oh, totally. Okay, sorry. Um, I should wait. I'll so, save my no, questions for the end. Go ahead, continue where you you're were. You're totally fine. So we were doing the very first year, we do a one-act festival pretty much every year where we produce one-acts. People can submit original like one-acts. We'll do some published one-acts. And this is the first year we ever did it. We called it Save Our Shorts because they're short plays. So us, because there's always a fundraiser kind of a thing. And we were in what we call Hell Week, so Tech Week which is the week leading up to opening. And this particular rehearsal was like Murphy's Law. Me and my best friend Shay, who is my typical co-collaborator, who's actually at our theater space right now, building a giant mushroom forest. She's our set designer. We're directing most of the shorts. We were the co-directors of it. So we're sitting there. We've got our actors. Half of our actors are backstage. Half of our actors are on stage. She looks at me and tap my arm and point up and we already knew shit was going to be bad because we got there and we just we were like, he's pissed. He's so pissed today. We can feel it. 
He's like clawing his way into the lobby. You could feel it when you got there. I look up and the fans, we have two fans above the audience seating area because it gets really hot in there because it used to be an old warehouse and it has a tin roof and it's the yeah. summer. Yeah, that'll um, do it. But we had unplugged them because they're really loud. So we don't like to have them during rehearsal. So we had unplugged them when we got there because the space had been cool enough with like the swamp cooler on in the back because there's like a big swamp cooler for the whole building. So we were like, it'll be fine. So we had unplugged them. So they're both sitting, plugs dangling. And if I could find this video, I will send it to you. Please do. I'll see if she has it too because she also has video of it. She points, the fan is whirring so fast, like going fast, 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 fast. And then it just stops, like dead stops. Doesn't like slow down, stops spinning. And I'm like, is it plugged in? Is it shorting out what's happening? And she's like, the plug is dangling. And I was like, the fuck? So we're both sitting there watching this. And every so often, it'll whir up and it'll stop. And we're like, all right, let's just get through rehearsal and get out of here. Like, let's just get through rehearsal and get out of here. So we keep going with rehearsal. All of a sudden, one of our actors backstage is like, I can't find my costume. I'm like, what do you mean you can't find your costume? I'm like, my whole costume is missing. I'm like, are you kidding me? So I go back there. I look. It had been tucked up above a storage cabinet in like a room that's connected to the dressing room that is locked we found it like two days later what balled up balled up and shoved like above a tote box i'm like okay that's weird sure that weird you know actor could have done it whatever so i'm like all right just go on without it it's not a big deal we'll find it if we have to find your other costume not a problem like fine whatever keep going on with rehearsal actors are dropping their lines Actors are tripping over things. We keep hearing like banging, like somebody's knocking on the walls, all kinds of things. All of a sudden, we're taking a break and we hear a scream come from back in the dressing room. And then a bunch of people go, oh my God, oh my God. So we go back there because clearly something's happened. There are a bunch of mirrors that are screw mounted into the wall of this dressing room, right? One of these mirrors had flown off of the wall and on top of an actor and they're screwed into a concrete wall yeesh okay yeah she was fine thank god mirror didn't break they're like these giant old like 70s mirrors they're huge they're probably six feet tall and like four feet wide mirror was fine we stuck it back up screwed it back into the wall but it was like something had ripped the screws out of the wall we had to like scoot it up and screw it into a different spot screws still attached like little clamps on screws ripped out of the wall she's fine i'm like what the hell happened and she's like i was just sitting here fixing my makeup getting ready to go on for the next scene and it flew at me like came at me and i look at the other actors who are in there with her, and they're like we have no idea that thing came off the wall so fast we thought something had crashed through the wall behind it (laughs) dang yeah so there were witnesses. Um, this is not like this there girl was were, back there, there were alone. Witnesses. No, there were like four people in that dressing room with her. Keep in mind, this girl's like 17. So she's freaked out. That's so all we have to like, we're like, you're fine. It's okay. Shake it off. Go for a walk. You're fine. It's, it's okay. Like, the Peter snack from Chill out. you're okay. Yeah. So then we're like, all right, everybody shakes it off. We finish our break. We keep going. There are two pianos backstage and we just hear one of them start playing. Like ragtime music just starts playing backstage. And we're like, who's playing the piano? Guys, don't play the piano. Everybody's like, no one's playing the piano. But we all hear it. All of the actors, us included, hear this piano playing. And we're like, fuck. So I go back there. I like close the thing over the keys and I like put a box on top of it. I'm like, all right, I can't. Finally, we finish rehearsal. Everything seems fine. Everybody is stressed. Everybody is tired. So we're like, all right, everybody go home. We'll see you tomorrow. Like, shake it off. You'll be fine. Like, we got this. Show's going to be great. Like, pep talk things. We're getting ready to close up. Shay goes, turns off the light in the dressing room. Unplugging stuff we had plugged in, turning lights off, because that's, you got to close everything up when you leave. I lock the back door. Shay turns off the dressing room light. She's like, I'm going to go start taking stuff to the car. Can you get work lights, which the work lights are fluorescent lights that you use during rehearsal or when you're building so you don't have to turn the super hot theater lights on so i'm Mm. like yeah i'll hit the works can you make sure the lobby lights are on i was like yeah sure so she is in the lobby she carries stuff out to her car 
she comes back in she's like all right hit the works i hit the works and i start walking to the lobby and i hear click clack click clack shoes behind me click clack click like faster click clack i start just i'm not running because it's dark and i don't want to run into set pieces but i start booking it clicking stops i look to my right into the audience and i see a thin man in a black suit wearing nice shoes and i see his spindly fingers and he just crosses his legs and just like does a little and i'm like oh my god no and i out out i uh uh-uh, no <laughs> out i'm out it felt like he was like oh you think i can't catch you like huh no so i'm, I'm like no i saw him we gotta go i'm like i fuck out into the parking lot she's like oh follows me wow oh my god and we heard the shoes again as we went to she slammed the door closed and locked it and we were just like oh my god we stood there for a minute like he's oh like i literally when i was looking for the video i found another video that we sent to my mom we were like we just had to leave because we were in the theater space painting and we could hear him walking around backstage we heard his shoes click clack click clack click clack click clack click clack and we were like like pacing and we were like nope we're leaving clicking his shoes we're leaving like in the video we're like we heard him clicking at us and you could hear his shoes click clack i'll send it to you it's hard to hear but like you could hear him start to walk through the theater and we went nope she's like close the door and i just like <laughs> door closed oof so that's terrifying he's whoa that's he's terrifying so scary who do you he's think this so ghost scary. is I have no idea. And that's the thing is like we so we jokingly call him the Wilkerson demon because like we're like, is he even a ghost? Is he a demon? What is he? Because the other ghosts can like kind of fuck with you. They'll move stuff around sometimes. They will hear like doors close. They'll turn lights on. But he can throw things at people and like walk around and touch you. It's terrifying. Yeah. It, and it, just the, the sense of sheer and utter dread that you feel in that space like the air is thick in there like you can feel it yeah it's awful so shay looked into the history of the building because we were trying to figure out because the man who owns it is getting he's elderly and he's getting up there and he's losing his mind a little bit it's very sad and we love him dearly and we love the space and we love the collaboration that he has built and this sort of tradition he's kept on as we were trying to figure out if he like outright owns it stuff like that in case something happens to him so she's looking into sort of how how it changed hands over the years the building was built in the early 1900s it used to be what is sort of this l of it so the back main theater and this where the wilkerson is and it was like an agricultural warehouse originally like they kept livestock there Mm. and like grain and stuff like that like it was just a warehouse that the like agriculture department owned then it was sold to some auto parts company and they had it as a warehouse from the 30s to like the 50s ish then it was like privately owned then dennis wilkerson bought it in the 70s and he turned it into a theater and it's still a theater now so all we can think is that he was somebody who died when it was still an agricultural warehouse but we're not sure and he's so powerful and that's what's terrifying about him so much so that employees that work there have called the local indigenous tribe to come and sage it people have come to try and do exorcisms of the space and nothing has gotten rid of him nothing it kind of like calms him down for a little bit Mm. like he's pretty shoved back into his little dressing room again because they just did it at the end of last year, but nothing has gotten rid of him. And I don't know if it's possible to get rid of him. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Do you think that maybe, because you say it's a figure in a black suit. Mm-hmm. And nice pointy black shoes. It's just an interesting uniform. It- when would that person have been around, if at all? As a historical costumer, his, what he's wearing from what I've seen of it, is roughly turn of the century, like late 1910s, early 1920s. 1919, if I had to like nail it in a year. So fairly old. 
So you're sh- pretty Older sure than he's, costume he's pre-theater. Oh, yeah. He's pre six costume ghost is pre-theater. She's her outfit is decidedly early 40s. Whatever she's wearing, she's got like a little skirt and a blouse on. And then Wilkerson himself is there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you have three ghosts. Yeah. Three ghosts. And one of them is just a dick. <laughs> he's a dick. And so like we literally we're like, maybe he was murdered there, but we can't find anything to support that. Because like our thought was maybe he was some sort of like cattle baron or something somebody didn't like or he was doing something he shouldn't have but we have no idea and it, it's scary he's scary yeah and well, like sounds yeah. yeah everything you're saying gets me the, ugh, the heebie-jeebies but well he, oh my god when you say that they've tried to get rid of him before and and yeah. remove him and whatnot but he just kind of sinks back into the um room you said right? yeah yeah. I wonder if there's not like an object back there that this spirit is attached mm-hmm. to. And that's why it won't maybe. go because it's just attached to a specific object, maybe. Maybe. In the dressing I don't room. Know what? That's where the mirror came off the wall, right? Yeah. Maybe his he's dead body the is most in, powerful back there. Maybe he's a his dead maybe. body's in the wall or underground, or he has an item back there or something. I mean, I'm just speculating. That's all we can do, right? Yeah. But yeah, it just I'd love to come see this theater, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Please. Please do. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> because ultimately, it's... the way I think and the way I I believe and whatnot, and everyone's got their yeah. different ways of looking at it is I think they're just a spirit. Yeah. Like, what are they really going to do when they catch up to you? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think they have much power other than to make noise and try and scare you a little bit. But yeah. that's me. Mm-hmm. So let's get a group together and uh, stay the night in the theater. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can make it happen. Or just take a little tour. I'd be fine taking a tour because yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 I don't love being scared all yeah. the time, you know. Uh, yeah. I'd be really curious because to have a space occupied by three people supposedly yeah. very distinctly different entities yeah and they're not like interacting it's one or the other or i i, I don't know i don't know yeah i don't know we but, don't know but it is very oh i you gotta find those videos because that would just uh, yeah i texted Shay. i was like do you still have wilkerson demon fan video she's like somewhere i'll look for it i was like okay oh, please so i'll see what i can find i uh, if and i found one of costume ghosts making the lights flicker backstage she does that sometimes yeah dm them that to me just because yeah. i want it all so that is a that overall that's a pretty big happening for this theater yeah. demon fans mirror oh. chasing you and yeah. i'm sure you've had other experiences there as well or is that oh, like totally. the scariest happening yeah. thus far that was one of the scariest ones we've had a few like you can hear him walking around most of the time because his shoes make such a distinctive noise that's i think the thing that is most unnerving about him is the clicking of his shoes it's such a distinct noise you know how you can sometimes tell who's walking up behind you by their footsteps Mm -hmm. and the way that they walk you know how he walks Mm -hmm. you know it's him right by the way he takes steps it's like a click clack 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 like he takes two big steps two little steps every time is he wearing tap shoes no he's got men's rogue dress shoes on let's see if i can find a picture of like what i'm talking about they're like these but they're black rogues like old style dress shoes yeah okay but they're black like point toed leather slight heel very pointy have you or anyone else there tried to communicate with any of the ghosts we talked to dennis could we say we greet dennis we will be like oh thanks for watching the show dennis like we talked to dennis he'll nod wander off like he acknowledges you back sometimes we'll hear him be like night guys like stuff like that like dennis is very friendly we have no problem talking to dennis my friend Jonathan's son, who is one of our theater techs, he is 12. Costume Ghost likes him. Mm. He talks to her sometimes. She likes him. She leaves things. She started leaving things for him. Like, he'll find weird little buttons and, like, knickknacks and stuff. Like, she likes him. We don't know why. She just likes him. And we're like, all right, we'll take it. He's always like, oh, Costume Ghost says hi. And we're like, okay. He learned her name. He told me what it was. I don't, I'll ask him. And Jonathan's even like, I don't know. The kid's just charming. Like, I guess she just likes him. 
Costume um, ghost sounds yeah, kind of a predator, honestly. <laughs> like <laughs> she's like caressing you and running your hands through her your yeah. hair and whispering in your ear. It's like get out of here, you weirdo. Yeah, yeah. We we think she might have been a mom, and that's why she likes Billy. Mm. So you know, but yeah, she likes him. She leaves the trinkets and talks to him. He hangs out with her sometimes when he goes upstairs because he'll like go upstairs into the dressing room. We'll be like, "Where's your kid?" He's like, "I don't know." And we'll just hear him talking upstairs, and we're like, "Oh, he's hanging out with costume ghosts." Like it's fine, he's hanging out with costume ghosts. Oh boy. Um, yeah. And then other people definitely have experienced Wilkerson Demon. Wilkerson Demon is the infamous one. Someone will text our board group and be like, oh, Wilkerson Demon did some crazy shit today. Stuff like that. Or like our tech director will text us and be like, oh, I was walking through the Wilkerson, making sure that the people before you had cleaned out all their stuff. I tripped over nothing and like slammed my arm into the wall. Stuff like that. The Wilkerson bathrooms constantly clog, constantly. Somehow, some way, a tree root keeps growing into the pipes. <laughs> we don't know how it's an old it building keeps I mean... happening it's an old building but they like took the tree out where are these tree roots coming from they're also like there's a back door out into the light rail tracks behind the building because there's a light rail is the sacramento transit and you used to be able to open those doors and like, go out there and what the internal door is like a steel door and the outside door is like a screen door like an old metal screen door so it's got like little filigree like a little filigreed window and stuff like that and sometimes we'll hear it open and slam but it's double dead bolted so it actually can't be opened anymore like the way that it's like a two-sided lock so there's no turn lock to get out it is definitely a fire hazard please don't tell anybody we work in a death trap it's fine um <laughs> it's Dang, fine bro. all theaters all theaters are it's fine we constantly um, joke about how if a fire ever started there we're all doomed but it's like double dead bolted so you have to have the key for both sides to get the door open and only the guy who owns the building has that and we'll hear it like that old screen door like in the middle of shows and we're like what the hell what is he doing back there like what yeah. okay yeah lights like the power has gone fully out in that theater when the power in the rest of the, the other two spaces and like the studio spaces that are there are working just fine but all the woke power is out it'll just go out like mid-show and you're just in the dark the speakers constantly pop and crackle and like play weird noises it's intense why it's intense. continue why not just shut it down burn it down and start else start elsewhere <laughs> start again somewhere uh, else so we we are in the process of looking for a new theater space because the owner is aging and yeah. there is con some concern about the public losing the space but we've been there for like 15 years and it's also our home and finding theater spaces in sacramento is really hard to do because either you rent from somebody else who owns a theater space and you have to contend with the other people producing theater in those spaces, which we do now, but we've been there so long that we kind of get first dibs on mm -hmm. the stuff that we do and like this when we have the space and stuff like that. So we would be the new kids somewhere else or we try to lease and or buy our own building, which like we're a nonprofit theater company. We just fully cannot afford to do that. Yeah. And so we got to find a new space, but how do we go about doing it? So we're in the process of trying to find a new space. We have thrown around the idea of working in a couple of different spaces because there's multiple theater spaces in Sacramento, um, but all of them either are occupied by an equity theater company, so professional theater companies in town, or mm. another mm. community theater owns the space and right. rents it out to other theaters. So it's just a process of like finding where we're going to go. But at the same time, like we love working there and yeah. we done a lot of really great theater there and, and you're used to have the, a lot of history there you're already used to the ghost so it's like not a big deal correct yeah it's complicated and would we love to have a nice beautiful state-of-the-art space that doesn't have possibly a demon in it yeah totally we would love that but we make barely any money because we're doing this for fun for the most part and we're just a community theater so yeah. when our shows make money all that money goes towards making the next show happen yeah because we're a nonprofit, yeah. So like all of the money that is going into this show to build this set and make my costumes and all of that was money we made from the last two shows that we did. And then what money we have left over will go into the next two shows that we have, one of which is in the Wilkerson. <laughs> it's fine. So yeah, we're stuck there essentially, but 
We don't make hate it. Make it do with what you got. Make it do with what we've got. And he's... <sighs> he hasn't killed anybody yet. <laughs> that you know of. <laughs> that we know of. <laughs> oh my god. We felt so bad for... Oh my god. So... One night we were leaving. We were in the uh, we were in the big space, was what we call it. And we walk out, and there's a bunch of people outside the door of the Wilkerson. And someone comes over to us. And they're like, "Do you guys have a key to this theater?" And we're like, "Yeah, why?" And they're like, "Somebody locked an actor in there because this is before it had an internal lock yeah. to unlock both the doors." Yes, so you had to have the key to get either the back door and the front door open. And we're like, "What?" This old man had been locked in there after his acting class by a man who shall go unnamed because he has since passed away. Uh, and that's the only reason I will give him courtesy and was stuck in there for hours, hours with just the lobby lights on because he didn't know where any of the other lights were. And he was freaking out Had found a screwdriver and was trying to chip his way through the door. Well, yeah. This man's like 70 years old. Yeah. And my mom finally goes over and locks the door. He just like hugs my mother. And it's like, I thought I was going to die in there. And we're like, are you okay? Breathe? Do you need some water? Are you okay? Do you need some food? Do you need to call somebody? He's like, I don't know what's in there, but I thought it was going to kill me. And we were like, yeah, okay. We know. You're all right. This man was shaken to his core, white as a sheet, had been just trying to literally had like chipped his way almost to the lock in the door jam because he was freaking out stuck in there. Like, that's how dreadful it feels to be in there. Wow. Sometimes. <clears throat> well, yeah. He has no clue, I'm sure. No clue. I mean, no no idea. clue that there's these yeah. ghosts in there. And then you trap a man yeah. in there. And he, and of course, one being locked inside of a building is already scary mm -hmm. on its own. Yeah. Then it's, you don't know, you're unfamiliar. You've got no way mm -hmm. to turn on more lights. So you're stuck yeah. in the smallest room of this building yeah. or not smallest, but a smaller area. No, it is. The lobby is the smallest room. Okay. In the building. So you're stuck in yeah. the smallest room of the building and yeah. you probably feel dread and this ominous yeah. vibe. Yeah. And it, I, who knows what he heard, what he saw, if anything, but I do not envy that man. I no. do not envy that oh, man no. at all. That is terrifying. Not at all. Yeesh. Have not you ever seen all. the gallows? No, I don't think I have. <laughs> okay, dude. So there's this horror movie that yeah. came out in like 2014 or 15 or 16, whatever. Yeah. It's called The Gallows. Okay. And I'm actually going to send you the trailer right now just because it is one of please, my favorite trailers. Uh, favorite movie please trailers. Do. I love it. The movie's not that great. I mean, it's almost like a classic, you know? It's uh -huh. about... People that are yeah. inside of a school theater. They're a lot like oh, they're yeah. inside at night. It's all found footage. It's crazy. Nice. Oh, dope. Anyway, I digress, but it's just yeah. scary theater. So, yeah, it's, theaters are scary. Old guy, yeah. 70 year old guy gets stuck in. That's really irresponsible. Yeah, just a little bit. I'm sure there's plenty more that has happened there. Oh, yeah. But when I'm in town oh. next, you, me, and Billy, let's link up. Yes. Let's go yes. on a little ghost tour, house, theater, Heck you know, yeah. wherever. Heck yeah. Any other stories that really come to mind that you want to let us know now, or do you want to save some for another time? I mean, not that I can think of. I mean, I definitely have more because I grew up in a small town in California where there's not anything to do past like 8 p.m. Mm. So people just go to places that are supposedly haunted and do dumb stuff. So I got a lot of misfit youth stories for sure. But, well, if, you know, we can always do it for another time. Yeah, I mean, you're we, we've been going for about an hour and a half. Uh, after I cut out my technical errors, it'll probably be 10 minutes of that, you know. I, I love your stories. And I do want to ask this just because I like to ask and see where, yeah. like, background of people's lives. Like, are you a religious person? Are you spiritual? You're obviously in tune with something to where you can see these ghosts yeah. and spirits and you're sensitive to these things. But was there anything in your life that helped you cope with that? Or are you just like, it is what it is and it, it just is? It's a little bit it is what it is. I do some light witchcrafty stuff, but that's mostly a lot of it is welcoming seasons things like that just mm -hmm. being a part of nature I, my grandfather was indigenous so 
Ah. some indigenous practice kind of things. But yeah, for me, I think for me, it is sort of a science thing in that matter can only be created. It can't be destroyed. So all of the energy that we are made up of has to go somewhere well, it when our bodies die. I think th- yeah. I, it, it can't be created or destroyed, but changed. Yeah. Changed. It, it, yeah, it can only change. It can only change form or state. Yes. Right? Yeah. And so where does all of that energy go? Right? It has to go somewhere. So are we just seeing remnants of energy stuck in a loop? It makes you think, does that energy get spread to more people than other people? I find it fascinating, first of all, just this whole discussion, yeah. because some people have had the theory that all of time is existing at the same time. Yeah. And so whoever lived in your house before may see you as a ghost. Yeah. Yeah. But from your perspective, they're the ghost. Yeah. And all this stuff is happening. And we're all on like, again, we're all in the same plane of existence but you're just seeing maybe a different time. I don't know. Again, I'm, I'm not saying I believe that. I'm just saying it's a fascinating yeah. theory and concept or the idea that, like you said, they're stuck in a loop because they don't even realize they're dead, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And who's to say? I have my own personal beliefs, but I there's so much that we yeah. don't know about ghosts and spirits and all this. And so many people will be like, no, I do not believe in that. It's nonsense. And you can be an yeah. atheist, you can be a hardcore yeah. skeptic and have an experience and see something and like, well, there's something and there's so much more that we don't know than we do. We know so little, yeah. whether it's religion yeah, or science yeah. or whatever. We just, we only know so much. We only know what we know and it's not much, I feel like. Yeah, yeah <laughs> so no, not at all. I, and I do think different people are just, they vibe differently. Like, yeah, I am not on that frequency. I'm not tuned into that. And I don't think I ever will be. And yeah, it's not my a, husband too. And it's not a matter of I want to or don't want to. It's just not how I'm built. We're all different. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you are someone who from an early, early age is like, well, this is just what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just dealing with it. Yeah. And do you think that like, it seems like you've coped quite well. You just, it's very matter of fact. Cause yeah. what else are you going to do? Be scared all the time. You have to. You have to, or else you will go insane. (laughs) Yeah, I'm sure. You have, especially like, well, especially because like for me, I love like old historical buildings and stuff like that. And hey, old historical buildings got a lot of dead people in them. (laughs) But weirdly, not the Manchester Mystery House. Sorry to burst that bubble. The Winchester Mystery House, not that haunted, unfortunately. The most haunted (laughs) house in the entire world. And it's like, super not. When I was there, I only had two ghost experiences. One of them, obviously, Sarah Winchester, who owned the house. She's puttering around. She lives there. That's her house. She's like, all right, whatever. She was a baddie. We stand her forever. It's fine. Okay. Um, and then the other one, <laughs> yeah, the other one, they actually know who she is, which is the craziest thing. During the 1906 earthquake, there was a young maid of the house who Sarah had locked in a bedroom because she was upset with her. Like you do. I was was literally just going to say, yeah, that's pretty standard. (laughs) When the earthquake happened, because the house is code violation on steroids, a fireplace in the room collapsed on this girl and killed her. Nah. Yeah. And she's pissed. She's mad about it. I would be. (laughs) I, yeah, it's understandable. (laughs) Yeah. And so like she does not want you to go on that tour. She does not want you to be in that room. But like other than that, pretty much just Sarah wandered around being like, what's up tour? And then like hiding from hiding from the ghost of the maid she killed. Right? Literally. Oh my God. (laughs) Jeez. Oh, that girl's pissed. She's pissed. I would love to. Yeah, they're like a maid died in this room. It's they're fun. Some of them are, I think, trumped up. Some of them are you're like, yeah, that place is haunted. Yeah, and, but, and I'm one who would rather go to a haunted place than deal with spooky objects like like a Ouija board or dowsing rods or anything. Yeah. Or I, I would not want to mess. Yeah. Like I have a friend who's like, let's go to this haunted place. I'll bring my rods. And I'm like, let's just go and not try and. Yeah. Yeah. You mean that spiritual lightning rod? No, thanks. <laughs> I'll just go and be there. Like Ouija boards are asking for trouble. Yeah, no, thanks. They got rules. Don't disrespect those. That's not a toy. Yeah. Pass, bro. Yeah. A hard pass from me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Thanks, but no thanks. 
Well, shoot, Aaron. I, I'd say let's wrap it up for now. Yeah. And let's do another little session. You can tell us some more Absolutely. stories from your personal life, some more theater stories. Heck yeah. Please find those videos if you can. If not, you know, not the end of the world. I will. I'm, I'm feverishly searching for them. <laughs> Um, I'm mad. Yeah. I'm like, they're here somewhere. I believe in you, first of all. So that's just Thank you. to start. I believe in you and your friends. Yeah. So at least you got backup too. I do mm. other people have witnessed these things with me? So like, I'm. I know that I'm like not insane. Yeah, exactly. Do you have any socials or any programs? Anything you want to yeah. plug? Have the people follow, check out, anything like that? <laughs> Uh, I mean, obviously, please listen to Roll for Booty Presents the Booty Call. This upcoming Monday the 13th, you and I are on a live stream with Roll for Booty doing the Obajima 5e supplemental by 1985 Games. So please also check that out on the Roll for Booty YouTube channel. And then I, my socials, I'm a You're Dating the Grim Reaper, all one word, on pretty much everything, TikTok, Instagram. My TikTok is just videos of my ducks. So if you want to see videos oh, of my ducks, hell yeah, that's dude. Where to find them? Yeah. <laughs> I'll link it all in the description of this. Check all those things out. Great shows, fun times. If you like Dungeons and Dragons or anything tabletop styles, Aaron, Billy, they're all about it. And I'm excited and honored to participate with you guys. So thank you Heck for yeah. coming on Unholy Vibes. For anyone out there listening or watching, reach out if you have any questions for Aaron or myself about any of her stories that she's told, her experiences. If you think I've forgotten to ask an important question, let me know. I'm in contact. She can answer her questions retroactively. So we're good. Thank you for listening. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Unholy Vibes Pod. Check out our YouTube channel at Unholy Vibes Pod. Be sure to share this episode and all of our others with anyone who likes spooky stuff. And lastly, if you or anyone you know has been affected by a spirit, a spooky demon, a ghost, an alien, a stalker, a killer, whatever, a gagu, you know, just some something, anything under the weird, the supernatural or the natural, as long as it's spooky and it gives you those unholy vibes, reach out to me, email me at unholyvibespod at gmail.com. I want to know your stories and I want you on the show. I'm in it for the love of the game. So if you have anyone out there that you want to refer, send them my way and we'll get them on. And if you also, also, if you are too shy, you can also submit your story and I will tell it for you. If you're, if you want to submit something anonymously, I've had a few people reach out and say, Hey, I don't want to come on because I am awkward and weird, but I want you to tell the story. So I will do that gladly eventually. So anyway, thank you all for listening. Stay spooky, and we'll see you next time.